likes a sound check. Hey, what's your name? Good to meet you. My name is sound check. Sound check. Welcome back to 30 days of Photoshop. We're on day 30. Today we're showing you how to replace a sky. Hey there, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun and where we're the home of 30 days of Photoshop and it's day 30. Thank you so much for joining me for this fantastic journey. It's been an absolute blast. I hope you've had a good time. We've got a great tutorial for you today. We're going to be replacing a sky in Photoshop. We've actually got two raw photos that you can download. Just follow the link right down below. We're going to show you how to edit those photos very quickly in Adobe Camera Raw and then how to take a sky from one image and pop it onto another. So let's go ahead and start off by opening up our images. We've got two DNG files. These are digital negatives. Uh, they're raw files, Adobe's version of raw files and they're gonna open directly into Adobe Camera Raw. So one image, basically I'm interested in the sky and this is sky stop one. And the second image, I'm interested in the land. Now these were taken at different times of day. It's basically the same location. You can see it's the same, you know, same couple of mounts and slightly different camera, uh, but because they're the same location in the same type of day, same focal length, the sky should match up pretty well. But this is right kind of like before sunrise here. And this is a little bit after sunrise, you can see the sun is hitting these mountains in the foreground. I think it's really beautiful. Uh, but this sky to me is particularly uh, interesting. I, I really like this sky. So let's go ahead. I'm going to hold shift and click on both of these images uh, to edit them both. We'll just go to our lens corrections and I'm going to enable our profile corrections here. Uh, and I got to choose which uh, camera I use because I used a uh, Canon lens on a Sony. So I think it's a little confused, but that's okay. Okay, now let's go ahead and click on just our first one again. And I want to go ahead and increase our vibrance, maybe our exposure up a tiny bit. Let's see, bring up our highlights and maybe bring down the shadows a little bit. There we go. Well, I don't know. I kind of like bringing up the shadows. There we go. I do like having the bit of vibrance in there, though. That's really, really nice. Actually, it is nice here on the right hand side, but on the left, I still don't have a ton of color. There we go. Let's go ahead and bring this up and then I'm going to grab my uh, graduated filter. Let's go ahead and click and drag this from the top down there. Okay, let's reset all the settings for our graduated filter. So let's just zero all these things out. And then we're just going to bring our exposure down a little bit and our color temperature down a little bit too. Let's bring a little bit of that green tint in there as well. Okay, that's just going to kind of even out the sky just a little bit more. Fantastic. That looks pretty good there. All right, let's go ahead and turn that off. And yeah, this is looking really good. So here's uh, the sky as we like it. And then here's our foreground. And honestly, the foreground here looks pretty good. We're just going to bring our shadows up just a little bit there. I think this is looking great. Now, Really important here down on the bottom, go ahead and click on uh, this little line of text. Uh, we want it to say Adobe RGB 1998. That's a good color space. There's a lot of color there, a lot to work with. Your bit depth, 16 bit per channel, super important. So we have as much uh, color and light information as possible to work with. And then down here at the bottom where it says open Photoshop as smart objects. That's also really important because that will allow us get to get back to this raw editor at any time if we need to. So let's go ahead and hit OK here. I'm going to hold control or command and click on both of these images. And we're going to go to open objects. So it's going to open both of these images up in Photoshop as smart objects, which will allow us to get back to the camera raw editor at any time. So here we have both images. Let's go ahead and grab our move tool. I'm going to click and drag from one image to another. There we go. Let's go ahead and close this original one. We don't need it anymore. You can see these are still smart objects here. And we're just going to lower the opacity of this image. I just want to make sure basically that the sky fills everything. Okay. And looks like just due to my composition, looks like it pretty much does. I just have to move it right in the right place. I want the mountains to be a little bit lower. You know, I don't want any mountains sticking up behind the mountains of the original one. Right about there actually looks pretty good. Now let's go ahead and bring our opacity back up to 100, make that invisible and take a look at what we need to do to make this selection happen. Now, sometimes making these selections is easier than others. In this case, it's going to be relatively simple because I just have mountains, right? So I just need to make sure my edge 
looks pretty good. And then we're gonna do a couple things to blend everything together. But in this case, it should be relatively simple. So there are a lot of different selection tools that you can use. In this exact case, the magic wand tool is actually perfect. Let's go to uh, our magic wand tool. You can hit W for your magic wand tool right here and just hold shift and click a few times right there on the sky. So you always wanna select the simpler thing, right? I don't wanna to try to select the mountains here. It's much easier to select the sky. There we go. Fantastic. Now, with my selection active, I'm gonna turn my other layer on and then all I have to do is click on my layer mask. Boom, check that out. Now I didn't make my selection perfect up at the top. Let's hold Alt or Option to take a look at my selection here, okay? And we're just gonna grab our marquee tool. Let's select that. I'm gonna hit Shift Delete, which is the fill dialog shortcut and fill that with white. And then down here, it looks like it's not 100% perfect either. So we're gonna use our lasso tool and make some sel lasso selections. There we are. Fantastic. So you can see just a little bit of layer mask cleanup here. All right. Looking good. Let's go ahead and click there. And now we can zoom in and make sure that everything looks good when we're nice and zoomed in. All right, you can turn some of these layers off and on. Like, you know, in this case, it, it didn't get these little mountains here, right? So you can kind of just trace around with your lasso tool. Okay, fill that, oop, fill that with black on your layer mask and there you go, you got it fixed. So it's good to just kind of get here and see what it's doing. Check out all the little, you know, check out the edges, right? Like that's the important part. All right, let's go all the way back up here. These are looking pretty good. I gotta say, nice edges. Isn't the magic wand tool great? Oh, dude, I totally had the wrong layer on when I'm like, these are looking pretty good. That was just my original file. That's really kind of embarrassing. <laughs> I was giving myself a pat on the back and it was not, um, I didn't deserve it. I did not deserve that pat on the back. Okay, well, not a big deal. Sometimes you do have edges that look like this a little bit where they're just a little bit off. Now, what this is time to do is to grab our select and mask. Uh, and it looks like I need to just move my layer just a little bit too. Let's make sure it covers everything over here. Yes, it does. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab select and mask because uh, that's gonna help you clean any lines like this. And this will totally help even if you have trees and stuff like that in your in your uh, original image. Just click on your layer mask, go to select, and then down to select and mask. Now we have some tools that we can use to refine the edge of our selection, but in this case, what we're gonna do is add a little bit of feathering to our selection. Then we're gonna add some contrast back, and that's gonna just smooth the edge a little bit. And then we can shift our edge either in or out. And you can see how shifting it this way made the problem a little worse. So we're gonna shift it back the other way. There we go. Let's bring our feathering down a little bit, bring our contrast down. There we go. And shift the edge back in a little bit more. All right, cool. And that's looking pretty good. Now, here we have a few different ways to view our image. So let's click on view. I'm gonna go to on layers. And now we're able to see what this actually looks like on the image itself. And for the most part, it looks pretty good. This area here is not exactly right. Let's go ahead and shift that edge a little bit more if we can. There we go. And sometimes you can bring your feathering up a little bit, which will help. Okay, and then if you bring your feathering up, I always recommend bringing your contrast up as well, just to get that edge a little bit uh, more well-defined. Okay, fantastic. Let's bring our contrast down just a little bit. All right, cool. And we can see the edge is looking really, really nice. Maybe we brought a little bit too much feathering in there. There we go. Let's go ahead and bring that back down. It just loses a little bit of the detail that makes it look realistic. There we go. So we'll bring that right back up to where it was. Okay. Well, all this area looks really nice, actually. Really, really good. Uh, just the top area needs a little bit of help. Okay, we'll just output this directly to the layer mask. There we go. And hit okay. 
and you can see our layer mask is renewed. And if I wanna go a little bit more, just do it again. Just go to select, down to select and mask once more. Add a tiny bit of feathering, okay? And we'll shift our edge in a little bit more. There you go, you can see we took care of that problem. Fantastic. Hit okay and you're good to go. Now, we have our new sky in our image. It looks great, we got a lot of nice detail in there, but there are a couple of things that like just don't look that good yet. Um, first, like the color is kind of way off, it's way too blue and it's way too dark. Uh, generally, you wanna make sure you're matching like the light levels of your new sky with your old sky because the sky lights the entire image, right? So if you've got all of a sudden a dark sky and a light foreground, it's not exactly gonna look right. So you just wanna make sure all that stuff has relatively same lighting and color values to look real. So super easy to do because we made this a smart object, right? So again, let's just turn this off and on. We know it needs to get a little bit lighter, maybe a little less saturated. So let's just double click right here on the sky, which brings us back to our Adobe Camera Raw editor, okay? We're just gonna go ahead and bring this up. There we go, fantastic. And let's just hit okay for now and see what that looks like. So this is a composite photo. So every time I adjust that, there we go, you're gonna be able to see the effects, which is pretty cool. I'm actually gonna brighten up this area a little bit. So let's just double click here, okay? I'm gonna bring in my graduated filter. We're gonna click and drag out from this area and try brightening it up just a bit. There we go. Looking really, really good. And this area looks good. And then our exposure as a whole, we can take down just a tiny bit. And hit OK. So I'm trying to imitate like the lighting intensity and color and direction from the original one a little bit more. There we go. That's looking uh, much better. I need to take the overall blue level down a little bit. So let's go ahead and double click here. Okay, we're gonna to go to our different uh, colors. Let's go to our saturation, and I'm gonna to go to my blues, and we'll just bring that down just a little bit there. Fantastic. And then, let's go ahead and back to our graduated filter. I need just one more of these. It's just gonna make this area just a little bit lighter. All right, let's go ahead and put that back to zero and zero. I think this one on accident, I had this adjusting my color temperature to make it more blue, so I wanna put that to zero too. So let's go back. <laughs> you can see it's kind of a back and forth, back and forth. But the cool thing is we're working with raw images each time. Ooh, look at that. See how much more real it looks now? So we're getting there, right? It's like little, little changes, but everything we do really starts to help out. I want it to be a little bit warmer. So let's go ahead back in here. We're gonna bring our color temperature up just a little bit warmer. All right, let's see how warm we can go and still make it look good. That's gonna make those, uh, like the clouds here with like red and yellow. Oh, look at that. Yeah, that's that's getting really, really nice. All right, I think we can get even a little bit warmer, actually, fantastic. And let's go ahead and unlink the layer and the layer mask, because right now, if the layer and the mask are the same, look at this, I try to move one and the other moves two, but if I unlink them, then my layer mask can move by itself. <laughs> Kind of trippy, huh? Or my layer can move by itself. And if just the layer's moving, then I can figure out exactly where I want it to be. Like this is, you know, this is where I had it before. Let's just put it back where it was. But maybe we want to come down here and maybe stretch it out a little bit, right? Because it's just a sky. I mean, not just a sky, but you can kind of move skies around a little bit. You got some, you got some leeway with skies. There we go. Cool. Yeah, I think that looks really great up there. So let's go ahead and hit that checkbox. Fantastic. All right, I'm gonna bring the vibrance up because I think we can get away with it now. So let's go ahead and crank our vibrance up a little bit more. Good deal. We'll do the same with our saturation, just trying to really bring some more color into the sky. We have some good like uh, saturation levels here in the foreground, so I think we can match the two. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, that's stunning. So the before and the after looking really good. I just need to move this down a tiny bit because it was peeking up from the from the back there. 
yeah, that's looking really, really nice. And maybe I'm going to make this area just a little bit darker. So we'll go ahead and double click here. We're going to grab our graduated filter again. Go ahead and click up here. Boom. We'll make you just a little bit darker. Lower contrast. Again, I'm trying to match some of the definition of the original sky. And that's just going to help like the mountains uh, look a little bit more realistic for the, um, the transition. There we go. So you can see the mountains sky was a little bit dark against the dark sky. So I'm kind of doing the same thing up here as well. Fantastic. So just turning this off and on, I'm just kind of looking around my image to see like what is what is right and what is wrong. I think this area needs to be a tiny bit warmer in color uh, because the sky is bringing a lot of warmth in. I think this would be warm too. So let's go ahead and double click here. This is beyond my background layer. And then I'm going to bring in my adjustment brush. Let's go ahead and bring all this back down to zero. Okay. And we'll paint right over here on our adjustment brush and go ahead and warm up our color temperature a little bit. Keep in mind, we can always get back in here and change this. If it's like, oh, I didn't do that right, no big deal. All right, let's hit OK and see how that looks. So again, I'm warming up the mountains over here. Ooh, see how like that looked? That made actually a really nice change because the sky here was a little bit warmer. So warming up the mountains helped out. I'm going to do the same thing right up here. So let's double click here. OK, go back to our adjustment brush. And we're just going to warm up these mountains a little bit here and bring up our exposure a little bit too. All right, and do the same thing right down here. So we can kind of, I mean, we're basically just painting light at this point, which is super cool. All right, so we brought it in there and there. And you can start to see how this light, the warm light from the sky, looks like it's. Uh, actually warming the mountains now, even though it's not at all, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> we totally just did that in, in Photoshop, but it really looks like it's actually warming those mountains. Wow, that's really nice. I think this edge could just use a little bit more feathering here. So let's just click on our layer mask, and we'll just go to Select, and then down to Select and Mask, and just bring in a tiny bit of feathering the edges were just looking a little bit too harsh. It wasn't looking super real. There we go. Wow. I think that looks fantastic. So there's our original sky. Here's our replacement sky. Really, really nice. I think especially around here, it's looking really, really good. This area I think is looking really good too. Maybe just lighten this up a little bit. Yeah. Okay, let's try that. We're just going to lighten that area up just a little bit more. Let's go back to our adjustment brush. I'm going to turn on the same one here and just kind of extend this up a little bit. This is pretty fun. Get to like figure out how to match the light and color between them to like get everything to look right. All right. Now, this was a relatively complex uh, job, but I do think it is important to like take a look at your light values and your color values and try to get them similar. And it's just going to help it look more realistic. So here we have there's our before this, uh, you know, just our background. And here we have our new sky. I think it looks really, really cool. And we've brought a lot more definition into the photo as a whole. And we are done with 30 days of Photoshop. Thank you so much and congratulations. Give yourself a little pat on the back. You made it to 30 days of Photoshop. We've gone over so many amazing things from opening up our images to selections and using paths and cutting people out of their background and working with raw images, advanced tools and techniques. So many amazing things in these 30 days of Photoshop. And I know you're gonna be able to use these tools and techniques to create some amazing images of your own. Thanks again. I'll learn you later. Bye, everyone.